Welcome back to another episode of Handloader TV. I'm your host, Jeremiah, and in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at this Zero Reloading Press from Area 419. And to go ahead and talk about the press and the company here, we have Craig. Craig, welcome to the channel. Thanks for having Thank me, you. Jeremiah. Very good, yes. Thanks for showing up, and uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about the company, maybe the history, sure, and then we'll get into the press. So we're Area 419. We're based in Northwest Ohio, and we are an American manufacturer with American products making precision products for rifle shooters, and whether that's a, a part that goes on your rifle or a part that goes on your reloading bench, we know the two things go together. And we've been going at it pretty hard for a handful of years. We started in 2008. John, who uh, he started the company, owns the company. He was working in the gun on the gun counter at Gander Mountain. They got rid of their gunsmithing uh, operation, so he bought the lathe from the gunsmithing operation and started spinning barrels to offset the cost of shooting because. As shooters, we know it can get expensive, so it was a good opportunity for, for him to cut into that cost. And that grew and grew, uh, and he's also a product designer. So in 2016, we rolled out the Hellfire Muzzle Brake, which is a very popular product. It's what we're known for, especially in the PRS community. And from there, it became more and more parts. One of the very first ones was our Master Funnel Kit, which is a great aluminum interchangeable head funnel kit. And from then, it's been rifle part, reloading part, rifle part, reloading part as we've grown. And now we've got 15 employees, and we're building a new shop, and we ship product all over the world every day. And it's it's really, really cool. That is really cool. And it's nice to see an American-made company making all these different products. And I'm familiar with some of them, and they're top-notch, high-quality stuff. One thing I was really not expecting to see, though, was this guy right here. I had not expected to see a new reloading press, and certainly not from you guys. So when I saw the release on this, it kind of blew my mind. I'm like, and I said, I yeah. got to try this. I got to see what it's all about. And you guys Absolutely. were kind enough to send a press over a little early. So I put maybe around 3,000 rounds, sizing, seating bullets through this press. But why don't you go ahead and give me the idea behind it and talk a little bit about the details on it. Well, we're shooters, and everything that we make is based on solving one of the problems that we have or one of the struggles that we have as shooters. And being shooters and pretty high capacity, we reload lots and lots of rounds. Mm -hmm. And I've reloaded a lot of rounds on on different presses. Mostly I was using a Redding T7. I think that, you know, that was a that was a product that made a lot of sense to me early. I knew that I was giving up what might be some repeatability for, uh, you know, and that's from round to round. Some, I'd give up some measurements for being able to get past. I didn't want to reset my dies. I wanted to be able to swap them quickly. But again, I, I liked that press, but knew there was something on the table. I've also reloaded a lot of rounds on a, on a single stage, on a rock chucker. Mm -hmm. And it's great. And you get in your your ammo measures really well. You got a concentricity gauge there. But I didn't like the inconsistency that could come from changing a die. Uh, and we'd also use some of the other, we'd used a, a Forcer Coax. And we, there were some things we liked about that, some things we didn't like about it. So when it got down to it, you know, John and I sat down and we thought, what do we like? What do we not like? And if we were to build the ideal press, what would we do? And from our vantage point, we have all of the ease of use that comes from a turret press and all of the rigidity and consistency that you're going to get from a single stage press right. in a package that also builds in, and you know this, thousands of rounds in, builds in ergonomics that don't exist anywhere else in the market. That's one thing that I really like about this press. The first thing I did when I got to the press is I pulled the handle down and I wiggled it. Mm -hmm. And there's no side-to-side -side movement. As a matter of fact, the ultra mount here was moving more than the press handle. Yeah, you can see even on this pretty heavy gauge steel from inline fabrication, you'll watch it play around on the base before you'll notice play in the system. And the way that we were able to achieve that is by using ball bearings and thrust bearings that are preloaded. You know, these are bolts that we could have bought off, bought off the shelf, mm -hmm. but we couldn't get the tolerance out of an off-the-shelf part we wanted, so we started making them. Uh, there are 22 unique parts that we make for this. The only parts that we don't make are the bearings themselves, uh, as well as the ball bearing, and, or the, the bearing ball, the ball itself, and the spring that are inside there. Everything else, the uh, the tension screw that captures the wedge here, we made it, we made the arms. There's a quarter 20 set screw there, or a quarter 20 screw there that we didn't make, but otherwise everything is, is of our manufacturer because we wanted it to be exactly right. And there are parts and pieces in this press that are so far different and so much, there, there's so much extra that was done here that it's something that You'd seen pictures of it, you'd seen video of it, but until you pull it out of the box and put it on your bench and pull the handle, 
it's very, very difficult to appreciate just what this thing is. That's very true. And watching the videos, I watched the product release. I was excited about it. And then when I actually started using it, there were so many little things that just popped up. And I went, wow, I really like that. Wow, I really like that. Like the ball bearing in the handle. Mm -hmm. 3,000 rounds later, that is so nice. It's very ergonomic. It's easy to use. And a lot of times I'll also decap on my turret press because mm -hmm. it's easy. And I like to decap before I clean my brass. You get a nice little tray. Nice little They tray. drop down through the body. You're not losing them all over the place. There's no baby food jars or hoses. Mm -hmm. It's clean. It's tidy. You know, we knew we wanted the press to produce the finest ammo that you could make. We also want the experience at the reloading bench to be one that you really enjoy because we shoot for a couple different reasons. We shoot to harvest game. We shoot to compete. But at the end of the day, we all shoot and we're all gun guys because we love it and because we enjoy it. And when you're spending that time at the bench, why not enjoy it? And that's the smoother ergonomics are nice because you can enjoy them. It also gives you a feel inside the die. You know, when you're getting to that shoulder bump, when you're feeling it come down, you get a feel out of the die that you don't typically get because you're not fighting the machine. But you can also enjoy it a little bit more because right. you're not fighting the machine. And anybody can grab a press handle lower and use that to kind of get some more feel, but you'll never get that. Right. And like I said, 3,000 rounds later, that's really nice. And, and we've built the press with an adjustable length handle to where if you want to get that thing down, let's say you're, you're seating bullets and you want a little bit more feel on that neck tension, we can shorten up quite a bit. And you'll, uh, you'll eventually get to your, your table here. But you can shorten up quite a bit and you can get a lot more feel as to what's happening when that bullet's pushing into that neck because con consistency there and neck tension, how good does the chamfer feel on the inside of that case? Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? Is that, you can tell how the bullet's gonna come out by the way the bullet goes in. So can you feel what's happening as you're- How much are you compressing that powder? Mm -hmm. Yeah, are you getting there? Do you feel it? Is there a donut happening on the inside of your, on the inside of your neck? And is that boat tail getting down into it? You know, all those little things that go into what's happening inside your case. If you're fighting the machine, you can't pull them out of the process. So we want it to be fun and we want you to get feedback from the press that you can't typically get. Right, and it sounds like you guys have put a ton of time engineering behind it. And it really is geared towards a precision market. I know the price point's a little high, and it's probably not for everybody. However, you can do just about anything on this press. I mean, I'm probably one of the weirdos who reloaded pistol ammunition on it. <laughs> I've also reloaded 4570 government. You'd be on shocked it. how many people asked if they could reload 9mm on it. And absolutely you can. Uh, the upper limit of this, it's it's pretty easy to load a 338 Lapua on this, something like a 375 Shy Tac. You could do it. You may end up scooping some bullets mm -hmm. up into the die for seating. Uh, but you've got a lot of stroke. And what we wanted was something that was steeped in technology that you don't typically find. Nobody's really pushed forward, in our opinion, in the press market in 50 years. Mm. You know, the the Rock Chucker is an iconic design, yes. and it's from the 40s. And the mm. Coax is, is a fabulous design, and it's from the 60s. And the turret presses started happening. I mean, I, I don't know who the OG may have been. I mean, the Lymans were very old. There were some herders mm. presses that were on turrets. But... They were, they've all basically been the same for 50 or so years. Right. So we looked around like we have in some of our products around our manufacturing floor and thought, what concepts can be pulled in that are ubiquitous in the machining world where consistency and repeatability are in the highest order? What can we pull into the, to the reloading world? And the core of the system is the pull stud that is built into the turret head. So this is how you'll replace these turret heads uh, if you want to go from one caliber setup to another. But the center post here, this pull stud, it runs all the way through the top, is a piece of A2 tool steel okay. that we turn just oversize, we send out to heat treat, then we hard turn to exact size and send to nitride so that we have a pull stud that's incredibly strong and incredibly hard. You're at a, you're at a Rockwell number in the upper 60s here. Okay. Uh, and it uses a, a skirted taper here that interfaces with a design on the inside of the wedge here and when you're when you're tightening this wedge it's grabbing this pull stud and pulling it down on center repeatedly and very tightly you also have this pull stud riding inside a bushing that we are making out of 17-4 stainless sending out the nitride so that it's incredibly hard and we can make them on size to where your clearance between this pull stud and this bushing which guide its position is between three and six ten thousandths of an inch wow. meaning that you can remove this turret head 
-hmm. put it back in, and worst case scenario, you're going to be a half of a thousandth different in position. And in all practicality, you're, you're going to have zero difference in where these things are from placement to placement. Uh, and that comes down to we, we, hand, we made our own drill bushings that capture this bearing ball and make your and uh, you know attach your your radial alignment there's a minimal clearance there as well so that these dies are as on position as they would be with any single stage press they're convenient and easy to move they lock down very very tightly and it's a simple to use press with more functionality and more versatility than anything else than any of its peers could could possibly offer and I imagine in the near future, too, you guys will be manufacturing replacement turret heads so you can have multiple turrets. Yeah, so guys have already ordered those. Uh, we've got a lot of them shipping out in the next couple of weeks. So by the time this is on air, they've probably already shipped. Uh, and we, this is a nine station, seven eighths head, seven eighths die head, our inch and a quarter. We've got two varieties of that. We've got one that's a hybrid, which is two, 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 and two with half of them being seven eighths and half of them being uh, inch and a quarter for guys that have some seven eighths. So let's say you've got a, um, a big heavy, a heavy gauge, an inch and a quarter sizing die. Okay. But then your seating die is standard seven eighths and you still want to be able to get them next to one another. And then we'll also have the heads. They'll just have eight inch and a quarter stations. So we, we've got some versatility there. There's some other die projects that we have coming that you'll learn about at a later point. Uh, but, but we think that what we've got here is the start of a project which can change the reloading bench. And this is definitely not the completion of, of where we're going in reloading. Well, that's very exciting, and I'm very excited to see what you guys do moving forward with it. And I'm sure there's going to be some accessories for mm -hmm. in the near future for the back of there. And... All in all, I've been very happy with it, uh, speaking personally, loading ammo on it. I've been impressed. The ergonomics are good, and the precision and repeatability is definitely there. And I think in the long run, as you load more and more, that's what you're going to see with this press, is overall repeatability and consistency. I want my ammo to be exactly the same, whether I load it in January or for some stuff in the summer or for some stuff in the fall. I want to know that it's exactly the same every time because I want exactly the same result downrange. I, I, I want that repeatability over the course of a year or years or seasons or however you kind of break up your shooting life. I, I don't want to have to think, is this the same as it was last time? I just want to know. Right. Oh, for sure. Well, I think that about covers everything. Is there anything you wanted to add before we close out here? Reloading is a wonderful thing. Shooting is a wonderful thing. The outdoor sports are great and that we can be a part of it and be on guys' reloading bench and, and make the process more successful and more enjoyable. It's what we live for. We love it. Absolutely. And that's what we're all about here at Handloader. We like to share the wealth of information that we've gathered over the years, share neat companies like you guys made in the U.S., making these awesome and innovative products. It's really good to see. So thank you so much for Absolutely. joining us. Thank we you for having me. appreciate it. Take care and safe travels. See you soon. And we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We do our best to read every one of those. Until next time.